Hello, everybody. My name is Elliot Boyd, and I'm an energy services advisor here at Competitive Energy Services. And as the weather heats up here in New England and we enter the peak demand season for electricity, now is the ideal time to think about your electricity use and how you can make the ISO New England capacity system work for you by managing your peak day electricity load. The goal of our presentation today is to walk you through the basics of peak day and help you understand how capacity charges work here in New England. So we'll start with peak day 101, where we'll define terms necessary to understand the big picture. And then we'll take a look at historical peak load and where the system peak has occurred in the past. Then we'll dig into summer 2020 and how COVID-19 and solar resources here in New England shape our prediction of peak day. And lastly, we'll discuss the CES self-help program and the way that managing your electricity load during peak system demand can impact your bottom line. So we'll get started here with peak day 101. First of all, we'd like to introduce you to ISO New England. So ISO New England oversees grid operations and administers wholesale energy markets and conducts long-term power system planning for the New England region. Now, basically, these folks make sure that everybody in New England has the right amount of electricity when they need it. So let's talk key terms here. Firstly, capacity. And simply put, capacity is the ability to make energy and to put it on the grid at any given time. And this is an important concept. Most days, the demand on the grid is entirely manageable. However, there are a handful of days each year when the grid needs to call on more generation. And we call these peak days. The capacity to meet demand on these peak days is crucial for a reliable grid. So next, let's talk about the forward capacity market. And this is the forecasting and auction process through which ISO New England contracts with generators to make sure we have the capacity that we need from year to year. In other words, this is how ISO New England charges electricity users for capacity. So for the purpose of this presentation, we just need to understand that each end user pays into the forward capacity market because it funds investments necessary for grid reliability. So these capacity charges are dynamic, but they can make up anywhere between 20 to 70% of your electricity bill on a given year. You know, a pretty, a pretty hefty portion. So how are these capacity charges determined? Well, in short, the answer is your capacity tag. And capacity tags are assigned based off of the amount of electricity each account uses during the annual system peak, or the single hour during the year when demand for power is at its greatest. So there is a calculation to determine the impact of your capacity tag on your costs, but in the interest of time, we won't be getting into the weeds on the numbers today. It's also important to mention that not everyone can control the price that they pay for capacity. Only accounts with interval meters, otherwise known as telemeters, can control their capacity tag. So why does this matter? Well, for electricity users with telemeters, the annual system peak day presents an opportunity for customers to curtail their usage during the peak demand hour, lower their capacity tag, and decrease total electricity costs for the future capacity year. So next, let's take a look at historical ISO New England peak load. This graph from ISO New England shows peak demand versus annual electricity usage for the past 20 years. So peak demand, which again is the day and hour which represents the system peak, is shown by the lime green bar graph, while the annual electricity usage for the whole ISO New England grid is shown by the dark green line graph. The x-axis is showing which day of the year that peak occurred as well as the temperature on that day. So despite the decline of annual electricity usage in recent years, we've seen that peak demand continues to stay within the range of 24 to 26,000 megawatts during the peak hour. So the purpose of this graph is to highlight that there are no clear correlations between total annual electricity usage and peak grid demand. So demand and usage are two separate concepts. And today we're focusing on peak demand on the electricity grid. So if our goal is to adjust electricity demand on the peak day, we wanna focus our electricity curtailment efforts on the hour with the highest demand. And we call this the peak hour. So this graph is showing us a daily demand curve for the past five years of peak day data with the Y axis representing demand in megawatts and the X axis showing us the hour of the day. 
The peak hour for 2017, 18, and 19 all occurred between 4 and 6 p.m. And looking at these trends will help us to predict what hour peak demand may fall on for the summer of 2020. So the table here at the bottom of your screen shows us the day that peak, the peak hour occurred. And you'll notice that there's no trend here. You know, the peak day could fall anywhere between June 1st through early September. And this adds to the difficulty of modeling what to expect when predicting future peak hours. So what can we expect for summer 2020? Well, first let's take a look at how COVID-19 has impacted daily electricity load here in New England. So this graph shows us the maximum daily load. So the system's peak demand for each day in 2019 compared to 2020 between February and late June. So 2019 is shown here by the orange line while 2020 is shown in blue. Overall, peak demand load on the New England grid has been between three and 5% lower between March and May due to COVID-19. So residential loads have been higher while commercial loads and industrial loads have been lightened due to the work from home requirements and business slowdowns. But lockdowns have eased as we've moved here into June and the cooling load has begun to intensify as the summer heats up. And as a result, demand trends appear to be returning to near or above 2019 levels. You know, one other factor here is that we anticipate that closed businesses and industries will be begin to reopening here sporadically, introducing additional load onto the grid and presenting a fresh variable in predicting the peak day. Another major factor here in predicting the peak day and specifically the peak hour is the expansion of solar resources coming online here in the region. Specifically, this impact is a result of the behind the meter solar projects, which serve to reduce load on the grid by generating and providing electricity directly to users. So this graph from ISO New England shows a daily demand curve, highlighting the demand reduction resulting from behind the meter solar. So the X axis here is showing us the hour of the day, while the Y axis is showing us the demand throughout the day. And the dash blue line here on the chart represents the estimated demand without solar photovoltaics online. And the yellow area shows the estimated electricity needs which are being served by those solar systems. So you can see without the behind the meter solar online, we would expect the peak hour, that highest point on our demand curve, to occur midday. The takeaway here is that these solar resources are shifting the peak hour later in the day. And that's that trend that we covered back in our historical section. In fact, the 2019 peak hour was between 5 and 6 p.m. And that's the latest peak hour in the past 18 plus years. So what does this all mean for predicting peak day 2020? Well, knowing and understanding the factors at play here, as well as the history, you know, it's all vital. However, anticipating the peak day, and specifically the peak hour, is not an exact science. So we can expect the peak hour to fall on a hot day between June and August in the evening, but there are a whole bucket of variables, hence our bucket here, that get in our way when we're working to predict the peak day. Now, the first of which is the production and activity of solar. And this is largely determined by cloud cover. Now, another major factor here is the day of the week, which determines total industrial load. And lastly, you know, and most importantly, there's temperature and humidity, which together drive the residential and industrial air conditioning load across the region. And so this all bears the question, how is an electricity user supposed to keep track of all these factors and respond to a possible peak event? And well, that's where competitive energy services comes in. You know, in this last section, I'll tackle CES self-help, which is one easy way to manage your capacity charges. So CES self-help is an exclusive service for CES clients, whereby we provide regular information and action alert emails to notify customers when a possible peak event is on the horizon. So we provide detailed guidance on the likelihood of a peak event, outlining all the contributing factors. So this slide is a sample of the messaging that we deliver to our clients between six and 12 times a year, depending on how the weather's looking. So let's take a look at an example here. This graph shows the daily load curve of a CES self-help customer who curtailed their usage during the peak hour for 2019. 
And the daily load curve is like the other ones we've seen today, you know, with the x-axis showing the hour and the y-axis highlighting the demand. So each line here is representing demand for a day of the week, you know, during, during this week that the peak day occurred. The dotted red line here is showing a customer's load profile during a normal summer day on the 29th, you know, the one day before the peak event where no curtailment action was taken. The solid red line is showing a usage curtailment response taken by this user on July 30th you know, between 4 and 6 p.m. during that peak hour. And the red circle here indicates where this customer's cap tag was actually assigned. And you can see that the cap tag is less than half of what it would have been if no action was taken. So this graph is meant to highlight how much an end user can impact their capacity tag with these curtailment efforts. So this peak day demand curtailment effort saved this customer a total of $270,000 on their annual electricity costs. So that's how the CES self-help program works. You know, we help these clients to plan and prepare for the events through our system of detailed notifications. So you know, here's some key takeaways from this presentation. First, the capacity is an important part of your electricity bill, and it's one which you have the power to control if you have a telemeter and the ability to curtail electricity usage during a peak demand event. Second, the peak day is hard to predict. And this is due to many factors which determine when the peak day will occur. And lastly, you know, CES can help. You know, we have the resources and the expertise to help you anticipate and respond to a peak demand event. We'd like to thank you for watching. And for more educational content from CES University, you can visit competitive-energy.com slash CES-university. Stay safe and enjoy your summer.